One can choose to go back toward safety or forward toward growth. Growth must be chosen again and again. Fear must be overcome again and again. Abraham Maslow From the book Steal Like an Artist by Austin Kleon Start copying. Nobody is born with a style or a voice. We don't come out of the womb knowing who we are. In the beginning, we learn by pretending to be our heroes. We learn by copying. We're talking about practice here, not plagiarism. Plagiarism is trying to pass someone else's work off as your own. Copying is about reverse engineering. It's like a mechanic taking apart a car to see how it works. Yoji Yachamoho says, start copying what you love. Copy, 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 copy. At the end of the copy, you will find yourself. The human hand is incapable of making a perfect copy. We learn to write by copying down the alphabet. Musicians learn to play by practicing scales. Painters learn to paint by reproducing masterpieces. Remember, even the Beatles started as a cover band. Paul McCartney has said, I emulated Buddy Holly, Little Richard, Jerry Lee Lewis, Elvis. We all did. McCartney and his partner John Lennon became one of the greatest songwriting teams in history. But as McCartney recalls, they only started writing their own songs as a way to avoid other bands being able to play our set. As Salvador Dali said, those who do not want to imitate anything produce nothing. First, you have to figure out who to copy. Second, you have to figure out what to copy. Who to copy is easy. You copy your heroes, the people you love, the people you're inspired by, the people you want to be. The songwriter Nick Loy says, you start out by rewriting your hero's catalog. And you don't just steal from one of your heroes, you steal from all of them. The writer Wilson Misner said, if you copy from one author, it's plagiarism. But if you copy from many, it's research. I once heard the cartoonist Gary Panter say, if you have one person you're influenced by, everyone will say you're the next whoever. But if you rip off a hundred people, everyone will say you're so original. What to copy is a little bit trickier. Don't just steal the style, steal the thinking behind the style. You don't want to look like your heroes, you want to see like your heroes. The reason to copy your heroes and their style is so that you might somehow get a glimpse into their minds. That's what you really want, to internalize their way of looking at the world. If you just mimic the surface of somebody's work without understanding where they're coming from, Your work will never be anything more than a knockoff. From Awaken by Priscilla Shearer, 2 Timothy 2.5 If anyone competes as an athlete, he does not win the prize unless he competes according to the rules. Any athlete worth her salt knows the rigorous training that goes into achieving victory. Success doesn't come by happenstance or magic. Her preparation must be methodical and systematic. Early mornings, scheduled sacrifice. Any dreams of taking home a title are unlikely, if not impossible, without honing her craft to near perfection through painstaking commitment and diligence. She must build muscle, expand her stamina, and streamline her mechanics until performing them fluidly comes as natural to her as breathing. No one accidentally backs into an athletic achievement at the highest level. Nobody. Which is why it's always a shame when a a well-trained athlete, having dedicated her life and limb to the pursuit, ends up throwing it away by refusing to follow the regulations of her sport. 
How sad to see all that practice go to waste, all that potential underutilized, all that sweat and effort amount to nothing except disqualification and disgrace because of ethical or chemical or operational shortcuts to success. Run in such a way that you win, 1 Corinthians 9.24. The winning is not just in the running. It's in the way the race is won. Run in such a way that you may win. As believers, of course, our right standing before God has not been earned through our own spiritual exertion. The grace we received is nothing other than the gift of God, not a result of works. But through Christ's sacrifice alone, we've been released from the law and from its binding effects on us for our salvation. And yet, the Bible clearly marks the pathway that leads to a thriving life of Christian victory and blessing. It's really not much of a secret. God has made known the lines of demarcation within which you can experience success in all the events you've entered in life. As a parent, a wife, a friend, a leader. All the places where you're determined to excel in serving Him. Don't forfeit the opportunity through rebellion or illegitimate shortcuts or spiritual indolence. Don't throw away the things you've been called, equipped, and prepared to become by refusing to run within the divine boundaries of obedience the Lord has set up for your benefit. Run the way, the race not only with endurance and diligence, but also with careful, watchful submission to His Word where you're tempted to put yourself in a better position by bending a biblical principle. Stay anchored to the right path. When the Spirit alerts you to a ground rule, which feels in the moment to be unnecessary and inconvenient, don't recoil in rebellion. Deny yourself and follow Him. Run to win. Trust your Father to keep you on the winning trajectory the one that leads to hearing well done and enjoying the long-lasting satisfaction of eternal accomplishments, the only achievements that really matter anyway. So um, this ad is sponsored by Anchor. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free. There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. From White Hot Truth by Daniel Laporte. Pema Tadrin says, The problem is that the desire to change is fundamentally a form of aggression towards yourself. The other problem is that our hang-ups, unfortunately or fortunately, contain our, our wealth. Our neurosis and our wisdom are made out of the same material. If you throw out your neurosis, you also throw out your wisdom. I started to unpack what love and spiritual commitment really meant to me. Dismantling my assumptions, taking nothing for granted. I looked at every kind of relationship I was having, where I was generous, where I withheld, where, when I accepted things and when I yelled. It took me a long time to notice that there are some holes in my boundaries, big ones. I also noticed that a lot of women around me who were reading the same books and listening to telesubmits on infinite goddess power and unconditional harmonious love for an unfolding universe in times of change for the modern woman were knocking themselves out to do the right spiritual things, to be loving, more flexible, more socially responsible, more forgiving, more giving. Powerful potential there, right? 
but there was a noticeable difference between the tolerance and latitude that they afforded others, way too much, and the forgiveness and compassion that they gave themselves, way too little. They were taking too much shit. We're going to try a conscious uncoupling. I just downloaded the audios on it, a friend told me about herself and her soon-to-be ex-husband. I had to chime in. Except that you're leaving him because he's so totally unconscious, I said. What you need is a conscious lawyer. For some women on the, quote, path, unquote, serious rage and sorrow was buried beneath the guided imagery and platitudes about pain. Getting spiritual was delaying getting real. Psychologist John Wellwood coined a fabulous term, spiritual bypassing. He defines it as the use of spiritual practices and beliefs to avoid dealing with our painful feelings, unresolved wounds, and developmental needs. Brilliant, right? And the equally brilliant psychologist, Robert Augustus. You should just read every book he's written. Robert Augustus Masters sums up the behaviors of spiritual bypassing as such. Exaggerated detachment, emotional numbing and repression, overemphasis on the positive, anger phobia, blind or overly tolerant compassion, weak or too porous boundaries, lopsided development, debilitating judgment about one's negative or shadow side, devaluation of the personal relative to the spiritual, and delusions of having arrived at a higher level of being. Anyone? Yeah, I thought so. Me too. In short, all the woo is keeping us from dealing with the poo. Instead of medicating with Marlboros and martinis, we might be doing it with metaphysics and macrobiotics. And unlike boozing it up to drown our pain, the side effects of neurotic psychoanalyzing or forced flexibility are difficult to spot. We don't end up in rehab from too much medication, med- meditation or therapy. We just end up in more workshops. Think of that friend you have who has a not-so-loving relationship with her body, but because she eats health foods and talks a good body-positive talk about just wanting to be strong, we cheer her on. But really, she's got self-destructive motivations and a mild eating disorder disguised as a holistic wellness routine. On the surface, positivity and wellness goal-keeping present so nicely that it can be hard to see when healthy actions are hooked to unhealthy ambitions. Like too much of anything, spiritual bypassing can numb us out from our truth, which is where the healing answers wait to be found. Thanks so much for stopping by. I'm your host, Robin Norgren, and this podcast is called Montessori Creativity and the Meaning of Life. You can find me all over the web All my links are listed over on Instagram under at Robin underscore Norgren or at UBU for life.